Here's a couple of shots real quick to give you an overview of, of what we did. We wanted to simulate the wind, and one of the reasons this building in particular was interesting was that probably 360 days out of the year it's subjected to wind, so we'd have an opportunity to run some experiments with some natural wind as opposed to having to make the wind like we did in the laboratory. Well, more than half of the days we were there, there was no wind. So uh, we had to improvise, and we used the mobile ventilation unit that you see in the, the two pictures on the side there. That gave us an opportunity to make a known velocity going through that window. We knew what the wind was, and we were measuring it continuously. And we actually got a few natural wind conditions as well, and we'll look at a couple videos of them. You can see the, the furnishings of the apartments. We use similar furnishings that we used in the laboratory so we can start connecting the points here, understanding what the energy release is in the structure and, and moving from that. So you can see a furnished living room and a furnished bedroom there. All of these apartments were furnished throughout and were done repeatedly 14 times. Here's a quick video showing an outside view where our fire was in the bedroom right here. And we're looking from the bedroom, our simulated wind blowing in through the bedroom, down into the living room. So you can see the flames starting to blow through the living room, starting to involve the living room. The public hallway, where you've got flames just rolling down the corridor. And then you've got the stairwell door open and the bulkhead door open as well. And you've got flames all the way from the bedroom, more than 150 feet away, coming into the stairwell with uh, absolutely no fuel with the exception of paint and concrete in between the living room and the stairwell door. And you'll see here, the living room window fails. Uh, very important on a size up to see all sides of the building. Just because you have no flames or you've got flames pulsing out of the, the B side and you've got flames venting extremely quickly out of the A side doesn't mean that you've got a naturally ventilated fire and there's no wind conditions and, and everything's okay. It's important to see all sides of the building. And the other important thing was even when that living room window failed, sort of creating the path of least resistance, sort of a six foot by eight foot opening in the side of the building, there was still enough flow to completely split going out that window and still producing flames through the hallway into the stairwell. So you're talking a, a serious amount of air moving through this building that you don't want to be in the way of. First thing we and this fire started in the living room. The living room was well involved. And right now, we're pressurizing that stairwell with a single fan at the base of the stairwell. And you'll see we're going to turn that fan off. And we go from a completely protected stair to within seconds, that smoke's coming back down the stairwell, creating conditions that are are not suitable or that you wouldn't prefer. Here's a graph looking at temperature. So you've got your, your temperature in Fahrenheit on the right hand side here. And this is an idea of the scale of one of these experiments and sort of in the lab it, we could really control fire grows, open a vent, what was the impact of that vent, or drop a curtain, what was the impact of the curtain. Here we've got seven floors to work with and we wanted to replicate what the firefighters would do as they arrive. So everything from opening the base of the stair to access the attack stair, opening the fire floor, opening the bulkhead, turning fans on, turning fans off, all of these things we wanted to get a, get a look at. But here we're highlighting the use of the fans. So here you can see as the fans activated, what it does to the temperatures, mainly in the stairwell is what we're looking at on the bottom here. And it drops temperatures up in the 200 degrees Fahrenheit back down to ambient uh, very quickly. And what you saw on the video was what happens when you turn the fan off that was protecting a stairwell that had ambient conditions. You turn the fan off and you're allowing that flow back into the stairwell and you're in the three to 400 Fahrenheit within seconds of turning that fan off. So utilizing the fans to protect your stairwells is an absolutely significant tool when implemented properly. Wind control devices. Here's a closer look at the two wind control devices that we utilized. 
You've got what we'll call a blanket implemented here over the double window. Usually requires two firefighters on the roof and a firefighter or two on the floor below to hold the straps on the corner and essentially drop that blanket over the window, shutting off the wind. And that stows sort of getting folded up in a small package. And then you've got the wind control curtain here, which has ribs in it, some metal rods in it, which allow it to stiff across the, the window opening. And this can be deployed from a single firefighter from above and anchored from a single firefighter below with the corner straps. And that rolls up. This is six feet by eight feet. This is 10 feet by 12 feet. So you can see the scale of the two wind control devices there. I'll show you a video here of a wind control curtain being deployed. We've got a wind driven condition going through this bedroom out into the public hallway. It's gonna vent the living room window. So you can see the flames coming significant way out the window. You cut that air off, you cut that oxygen supply off, and as they get it in place, that's deploying it. It's almost like somebody's putting water on the fire. You cut the air off, you kill the fire, pretty much knocks whatever fire was in that living room down. You remove the wind driven condition and pretty much go back to the room and contents fire that you started with before the, the air was introduced. And that's a pretty good example right there of how that device is deployed. And in this case, it was deployed off the roof. It could easily be deployed out of the sixth floor over the fifth floor or out of the 40th floor onto the 39th floor as a, a tool to cut the wind off. Here's what that looks like in engineer ease. So you've got our temperatures here and we're in excess of 1500 degrees in the bedroom. So in the top, we're looking at the bedroom as we get down here, we're looking at the corridor temperatures where the fire department would be making their way down the hallway. Here we're looking at stairwell temperatures and pretty much before that wind control device is dropped. You're in excess of 1500 degrees in the bedroom. You're in excess of over a thousand degrees in the corridor, completely untenable. And you're up above 600 degrees in the stairwell. Also, untenable for firefighters. You drop that wind control device, cutting the air supply off. Essentially, you cut the temperature in half, if not more. And removing that wind-driven condition, again, allows you the, the ability to go ahead and implement your, your direct attack down the, down the corridor. Here we had the ability to essentially take tools that were in the minds of firefighters and welded together in their spare time and, and made on their own and get an idea of what these things can do, how we can implement these floor balloon nozzles and, and what impact they can have. And you can see two different kinds here. You've got the one that comes up from the floor below out the window and hooks onto the window sill on the floor above. And then you can kind that essentially has a 60 degree bend in it, sticks straight out the window on the floor below bands and as you adjust it out the window the, to the correct distance, you get that angle and it, the water will direct itself right into the floor above. Sort of the plan, the plan B. We can't make the fire floor. What happens if we introduce water to the seat of the fire? And that, Here's a quick video showing another wind driven fire. What's important is what's going on in the public hallway. What's going on where the firefighters are trying to attack this fire from? You see the floor below nozzle stuck out the window here. And once we get to the, the right point, they're gonna charge that line. They're gonna adjust the nozzle so they no longer have water coming back down. All the water is going into the floor above. No firefighter has to hang out the window on whatever floor. And you see the second that water goes in that window, wind driven condition goes away. You knock out those gases like we saw in the laboratory get some water on the seat of the fire, your problem starts to go away. And this is the ability to put water on the seat of the fire remotely. And one of the beauties of this nozzle right here is that that can quickly be deployed from the floor below, just like you would stretch a standpipe line up to mop up. Here's what that looks like in data. Again, temperatures in the corridor, which is what's really important, in the excess of 1200 degrees, 
flashover conditions in your public hallways. You can't advance on that. Stairwell temperatures up in the 1,000 degree range, something that you can't advance on. The second that floor below nozzle hits the seat of the fire, drops the temperatures pretty much from as high as 1,000 degrees down less than 300 degrees Celsius in seconds. Validates the tactic very well. And this was done a number of times. I'm just showing you one example. We talked about the natural wind. One of our concerns was that we were over simulating the wind. Here's a natural wind blowing into a bedroom fire. And to talk about pulsing, here's a prime example right here. If you pull up and you're the incident commander or you're the first arriving engine company and you're assessing the conditions you have inside and you see pulsing fireballs coming out of the window and going to the ground, you need to consider your wind condition. This is a, a great example of something you might see on a size up. And as it turns out, what we were doing in this experiment was taking the natural wind, allowing it to go through an apartment on this wing, through the corridor, and out on an apartment on the other wing, and it got to a point where conditions deteriorated so quickly, we essentially had to evacuate all the crews that could deploy the blankets from the floor above, because almost the entire floor was about to flash over simultaneously from one end 400 feet away at the other end of the floor and conditions were, were extremely bad, and this is what they look like out that window. And it turned out that the, the simulated wind was, was right on par, if not underestimating the ability of the natural wind. I'm gonna turn it back over to the Chiefs and we're gonna wrap it up. I love this stuff. I mean, can you imagine telling a bunch of firefighters, I got this great new firefighting technique, we're gonna black all the ventilation openings. They look at you like you got two heads, right? But, right, you see, right? And then another one, I got this great firefighting technique, we're gonna throw water on the fire from outside the building, right? What do they tell you? You're gonna push the fire. Guess what? It's being pushed pretty effectively by the wind, right? Instantaneous reduction, going from an unwinnable, unfightable, unmanageable situation to something we can deal with, with two really simple techniques. Aren't gonna put the fire out for us, but they're gonna make it fightable now, right? Go from not fightable to fightable.